Okay. So, I'm here with Chick Donovan, professional wrestling legend and LaGrange local. Um, how are you doing today? Well, doing great today. You know, every, every day is a good day. We get up, we uh, put our clothes on, we look for an exciting day, and then we kind of make it an exciting day. Uh, well, you can do it one way or the other. You can have a dreary day or you can have an exciting day. So I might as well make it an exciting day no matter what the day holds. And uh, it's always good, you know, just to be able to get up and, and meet a lot of folks and uh, interact and, and go to work and uh, do all the things we need to do during the day and, and just enjoy our life and, and then uh, see all those we can help along the way. And it's just a, always a great day. Awesome. So let's we'll start from the beginning. Um, well, let's say an introduction now. What are you okay. doing here in Lagrange now? Uh, right now, I'm working with the uh, with the, what they call Waypoint. It's to help with veterans. We help veterans from the street. Actually, just from mental health, physical health, and monetary health. Get all the uh, I guess we do all the programs and all the uh, paperwork and things that need to be done. Get the TD 214s. The uh, get the all the things that need to be done to get all the monetary help they can get uh, from the time they were in the service. Okay. And it started a few years ago, and get not to no, you're good. interrupt you. Uh, Miss Sandra Brownlee is the, is the creator. She was a 27 year retiree, okay. uh, sergeant major in the military, because I was in the military as well. Uh, a little story while I'm thinking about military. Uh, I was doing Medicare counseling for the last five uh, five years, and because uh, they went to a call center in Atlanta, so that kind of eliminated our job. That's the reason I came here to help with the veterans. But uh, and this is all a voluntary program and whatever. But uh, yeah, I was uh, somebody called in one day, and I was in the Navy in, in Jacksonville and uh, on the USS Farragut, and we we were in the, the Sixth Fleet and around the Mediterranean uh, for most of most of our career. And uh, this, this guy calls in, he was an ex, uh, ex-airplane pilot. And he was on one of the carriers that, uh, that I, was, I, I was guarding, mm-hmm. our ship was guarding. And my job was if the planes who missed the carrier and hit the water, I had to jump in the water there and then get the pilots out of the plane. But anyway, he had to be one of the pilots I was watching. You know, after all these years, of, back in the, I got up 67, so just some years ago, that I was watching the same guy I was on the phone with talking, watching him take off and land off that carrier. And I just thought that was quite nostalgic. He said, yes, yeah, quite a thing, but I've seen the carrier 80, you know, 80 whales, they swells of water over the top of it. So it, it was quite rough. He said, there was looked like a little cigar trying to land on a thing, just bumping back and forth. He said, it was quite a test. But anyway, I just thought that's quite quite unique, just, just being able to, to talk to someone that I was, I was guarding at one time. Well, that's really cool. Yeah, it is, yeah. Now, back to what, we, what I'm doing now, what we're talking about helping, helping veterans. And I forgot where we're going now. You have to keep me back <laughs> on point here. No, I was actually going to go into your wrestling career, but I wanted to establish okay. what you're doing now. Okay, I got you. Now, the wrestling career, it's, we started back in, I guess, 67, but uh, even before that, uh, I, I was a sports person in high school, football and junior high school, grammar school. Grammar school back in the 50s was a, was a big deal. It was almost like high school football is today. Okay. Mm-hmm. I started, I guess, playing football in 54. My teddy bear was a football, so mm-hmm. I always liked, liked sports, and we had a we had a uh, class reunion, I think, when I was in the third grade or maybe sixth grade. And had a crystal ball, and we were you know, the teacher was going over and, and telling our futures. And my future was to be in uh, and, and uh, actually in, in Yankee Stadium. But I didn't make Yankee Stadium, but I made uh, I made uh, uh, Texas Stadium. I made the Cow Palace. I made uh, the the stadium in, in, in Louisiana, was in, in New Orleans. The Superdome. Okay. I wrestled in the Superdome and the Cow Palace and in, in, in California and the in Tokyo Dome. So actually, I didn't make it to some of the football stadiums. Not in football, but in wrestling. But uh, but anyway, I was in the Navy and we got out of the Navy. Uh, what did I do? I bombed around? No, not really. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, I got in the I think I got in the jury business right out of the Navy. Went to school. Was going to school and started uh, in the jury business in Augusta, Georgia. That's where I was born. Okay. And. Uh, then I was transferred back to Jacksonville, okay, uh, and, and managing a jury store uh, with that company. And then I went to Macon, Georgia, uh, with that company and Freeman Jewelers, mm-hmm. and that, now it's K Jewelers. But uh, right after that, I got in the fire department, and uh, the fire department was incredible. I love that fire department because I love teaching. I love uh, 
uh, you know, of course, excitement like being on stage. Uh, and I get that bell go off in the morning, hit that street and down the, down the road, and then half the world on fire, man. Just incredibly exciting. Not, not really exciting, but, you know, it's whatever you want to call it, just getting that burning building falling on you, just, I mean, just getting that fire put out and helping save lives and things was just incredible. But uh, we created the EMS program in, in Georgia, uh, that fire department. Uh, I'm quite proud of that. The first paramedic stuff came out of, in 73 when we, we created the pro, all the program there and uh, okay, cool. out of the Macon Fire Department. So that's come a long way. I, I had the very first hearse tool or extrication tool that I used a lot to, to help people get out of cars and things. But uh, yeah, I was quite proud of being that, of being that firefighter. But then, then I, I put an application in uh, uh, to a wrestling school and, but at that time, I was working full full time job. I was working the fire department 24 hours and three hospital jobs the next day. Uh, one in the emergency room, uh, ambulance service, uh, a regular hospital. Then I worked in mental hospitals. In those days, we did shock treatments. Oh. After about shock, about, about 10 treatments, and uh, people forget all their all their bad stuff, all the bad stuff, and you just get start over again, I guess. But uh, but yeah, I worked 140 hours a week. So in those days, I learned the work ethic. I guess we worked. Uh, God, we worked all the time. Firemen worked. They have a lot of jobs anyway, but, uh, mm-hmm. but I love being a fireman. It was uh, I was there almost ten years, I guess, and uh, I was a sergeant. Uh, it was just an incredible, incredible time. But uh, I put that application in for the bit, uh, for a wrestling school, and I was down to about 120 pounds at the time. And uh, so the guy said, "Come on aboard," and we started training. I was 120 pounds, and and, and a year later, I was uh, uh, 220 pounds. I started eating. Started working out really heavy because I worked out at the fire department all those days. I worked out uh, quite a bit, but uh, I really got into it really, really mm-hmm. heavy. And I was still a fireman at that time for about uh, for about a year, and I started wrestling. Uh, we got done training after about a year, and I started wrestling. I got with Ole Anderson at the Georgia Championship Wrestling, mm-hmm. and I was still a firefighter at that time. And then uh, shortly later, I decided I wanted to go full time because I never liked doing anything part. And I always like to put everything I got into whatever I do. If it's golf or no matter what it is, I want to be as, as the best I can be at it. So mm-hmm. I decided to go ahead and leave the fire department, which was a, was was quite a decision to make because uh, I had a family and a home. I, I built a new home, and and uh, and that job I just loved. But I walked away from all of it just to be a professional wrestler. <laughs> and. Uh, I remember one time on the road, I had an old 74 Pinto station wagon. It was me and Randy Colley and uh, uh, another one of the guys with, they were, I guess, 250 pounds or better, up 300 pounds apiece. They were the Moon Dogs in New York. When we were in that little 74 Pinto station wagon, all our bags in the hills of Tennessee, we putted it up the hill, and the water was leaking out of the front, and the smoke coming out of the back, and we hardly make it up those hills, and then sliding down the other side, and then uh, back up the hill, back down the hill. We made the town, got our twenty-five dollars. Boy, you want to be a wrestler, that kid. Brokers that brokers everything, but uh, wanting to be a wrestler. So that's that's. That's uh, that's uh, the old school of wrestling. Now it's a lot mm-hmm. different, but uh, in those days you rode those roads, but and uh, made very little money, but just made the next town the next night and uh, mm-hmm. sacrificed your body to, to entertain folks. But uh, it's uh, it, it was is what I chose to do. I now I look back at it, I should have stayed a fireman all these years, but uh, <laughs> uh, the wrestling has been has been has been good. Uh, but I started in Atlanta, and uh, and that's when the TBS and. And I went from Atlanta that somebody saw me, I think Jerry Jett, and I went from there, I think I went to California. Uh, they called me to California to come wrestle out there, and then they called me to, I think, Louisiana. Mm-hmm. And while I was in Louisiana, uh, I got a call to come to Memphis. Okay. And Jerry Jarrett had seen me on TV, and, uh, and uh, to go back just a moment, uh, Red Shoes Dugan was a referee back when Gorgeous George was wrestling. Okay. And uh, when I was in California, I didn't know I should wear all my gimmicks on this match or whatever. So I asked the red shoes. He said, always wear all your stuff. <clears throat> you never know who's watching. So that day on TBS, I, I wore all my stuff on that match, and then Jerry Jarrett saw me. And uh, so they called me to start in Memphis, and that's when I got with the first family. Okay. And uh-huh. uh, Jimmy Hart and that gang, uh-huh. and uh, Kevin Sullivan, Rain Ferris, the Honky Tonk Man now, and uh, uh, Danny Davis, and uh, Ted Allen, which just passed away. And uh, in fact, most all the guys I started with have passed away now. But uh, mm-hmm. anyway, I started with the first family there in Memphis. It was pretty good. And I went from there. 
uh, where did I go from there? I guess to uh, to Knoxville, Tennessee, where I wrestled a bear for a month. Uh, then uh, I think went to uh, Texas. Texas was a, was a, was the Von Erics. Texas was a great career, a uh, great territory. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a ended up national TV again, and okay. everywhere we went, uh, it was over so strong we couldn't couldn't we couldn't hide anywhere. People come drove you, you know, come running after you, and whatever. So it was rather exciting, but uh, but uh, the Texas was real good. But uh, I think all those territories were good. They had their own they had their own niches, and uh, you, and you just had to find a way you to fit in to, mm -hmm. to create your that style. Every territory had its own style of wrestling, mm -hmm. and. Uh, so you should learn to fit in, and the, the, the fans were just incredible in those days. They, we sold out every house. We did the Texas Stadium, had 60-something thousand people there. In fact, I, I wrestled for, in the Cow Palace, and I wrestled for, I guess, uh, 100,000 folks in, in the Tokyo Dome and 10 people in a storage building. So it's been quite a, you know, quite a ride from one end to the other. But, uh, but I had some great times there in Texas, and uh, in fact, I had great times everywhere they went. Uh, so you just have to make those times good. And, and yeah, make the best of them. Sometimes it may not be so good, but you just try to make a uh, lemonade out of a lemon. <laughs> so what's the most challenging story from your training? Well, you know, if you want to be successful, it takes a lot of work. You know, work is, success is spelled W-R-K. <laughs> uh, when I opened, the, I opened the gym here in the Grange, uh, I'll get back to it in a minute, but when I opened the Grange in here, I opened the gym here in the Grange, somebody said, good luck, and I didn't have a clue what they talked about because uh, I knew it was already a done deal because I, I would put the work in. I worked 24 hours a day, uh, if I don't know if I have forever, getting that gym put together, getting all getting it built out. I already had a, I had a following because I just was building a bigger gym and had a pretty good following. But uh, but uh, when they said, good luck, I said, I no, because I knew I'd already was putting the work in. It, it was nothing, to, you know, success is about work, like I said. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there's no way around it. And in wrestling, it is, it's, uh, I guess you say double and triple work <laughs> to learn how to do all the moves. I think we drop kick that bag uh, I don't know, for hours and hours and hours. Just everything, all the sunset flips for hours, off the top rope for hours, taking bumps. We started, you started taking bumps that get your body used to all that falling around. Mm -hmm. and just stand on your feet and fall on your back. Then you get stand on the top of a chair to fall on your back. Then you get on top of a table and fall on your back. You just keep falling for, for just for thousands and thousands of times to get mm -hmm. your body in, in condition to take those bumps. So when you take the bumps, bump you back up and you continue on the match. But we worked for, I guess, like I said, months and months and, and uh, nights and nights and got up forever, just on all the different moves and things. So, but when you get to professional sports, it's not about what you're doing, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a mental game. Okay. What you're doing is just automatically there. You don't even think about what you're doing, you think about where you're going, you get into a zone. Okay. And I play music as well, and I was asking this bass player, a great musician, been all over the country, some, some advice about different things. He said, just know your neck, which may know your neck, mm -hmm. you get to where all the chords are, and, and listen to the music. And wrestling is the same way, golf is the same way, but wrestling, you, you, you know all your wrestling, you know how to wrestle, you know all your fireman carry, you know all the stuff, because you put the hours and hours of, of training in that, but then you just listen to the people. Uh, all these guys want to go out and do all this kind of stuff. TV now has gotten really crazy, but they want to do all these moves, they want to do all this fancy stuff, and all this, this different stuff, but they ain't listen to the people. Mm -hmm. Wrestling's about moving people's, uh, moving people's feelings and moving mm -hmm. them back and forth and up and down in that chair while they're watching it. You know, years ago, the fans now that are still getting autographs from me are 45 and 50, but there were little kids watching wrestling with their grandparents, and they used to say to their grandparents, you get a chair and beat up the coffee table because the guys on TV knew about wrestling. They, they knew the, the basic fundamentals of wrestling, and they had those people, they were watching them in their back pocket, and everything they did, they got that emotion out of them. They, they moved those emotions, and that's what professional wrestling is, is moving people's emotions. Nowadays, the guys want to go do stuff, so it's good, but uh, the effort, let's go eat some coffee, man. It's just mm -hmm. stuff. But you get those emotions moving, you get the people moving in seat, and you get, a, you get a part of you. You have to make them part of you. When I do music, when I do my little, when I do a little floor show singing, whatever, I'm, I bring people in. I bring people into me. Mm -hmm. We become one and the same. And when I play my guitar, I become my guitar. My guitar, guitar becomes me. One day, said somebody said, "You look like you're." Uh, Making love that guitar, I guess I was playing certain different songs mm -hmm. that I really, really you know, I get involved in, and all that all become one, one and the same, and then you become one and the same with that fan. Mm -hmm. You become the fan becomes you, you become the fan, so to speak, 
And when you can do that, uh, you know, that, that's, that's good. You get that, that attention, you get that, and that's, that's the payback for all the hard work is it, mm-hmm. making that fan really uh, letting that fan enjoy what, what you work what, what your hard work is. Can I interrupt real quick? Yes, sir. Is that what people refer to as ring psychology? Ring psychology, yes, sir. It's okay. moving folks. You know, you, uh, you know, used to, this psychology was so strong back in the old days, but the guys I learned from, they didn't have to do a whole lot to get that emotion. Mm-hmm. Uh, but nowadays, they don't have any emotion because they're just doing all this crazy stuff in the ring. I mean, incredible, I mean, phenomenal moves acrobatic, and jumps yeah. and acrobatic things and flips and flops. I mean, just, they won't last long doing that they just break your body up. You know, my body, I got a broken back now, fractured neck, I had knees replaced, and surgery and then knees replaced. Uh, uh, you get all, get all kind of injuries and, mm-hmm. and I don't fall down much anymore, but you still get injuries. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but yeah, it's the psychology of the wrestling is moving people. Uh, in, in that chair and, and, and creating a, a certain issue within them and, and bringing them into you and making them and just making them a part of it and making them part of the, the wrestling. Because everybody wants to be in there, but they, you know, they didn't pay the price, so they didn't do the work to get there. They just came to watch. So, But you still want to make them a part of it, mm-hmm. make them feel like they're, they're, they're part of you and uh, they, they know you well. And, and how a good guy, how to get over it is a good guy wants to get into the, the fans uh, and, they're, and they're talking about them, getting their mind first and getting mm-hmm. talking about them. And then when you get in their heart, they'll follow you anywhere. Uh, that's how you get in their, your mind first, thinking about you, talking about you, and then, the, then, you, become, then you become part of their family. Uh, the good guy, the bad guy, most bad guys nowadays have the wrong concept what bad guy is. They say we're supposed to go cheat. No, bad guys don't cheat. Bad guys out wrestle the good guy. Mm-hmm. I, as, a, as a bad guy, I just go out and out wrestle the guy. If I can't out wrestle him, then I might have to do something else. But, but generally, I just out wrestle him, and that's why that's why the heels get the heat by by wrestling moves. Okay. Being being a wrestler, now, they might not like you particularly, but boy, he sure is a great wrestler. Mm-hmm. It all starts with wrestling. Basic fundamentals. I'm a Nick Saban fan. Not to get off the subject, but mm-hmm. maybe not. But but if you can't block and tackle, you can't score a touchdown. You can't and you can't prevent one. Mm-hmm. It's all basic fundamentals, and, and the, but all that's been lost now in, in today's. I think whole society now, uh, in relation with this, is uh, back when I, when Lucy and, uh, and Desi Arnaz was on TV, they were in, they were in twin beds. They were married in real life, but they wouldn't they couldn't even be in the same bed. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, you got every every vulgar language, everything you can imagine coming out over the airways. Mm-hmm. So everything has changed from from that to what it is today. And so wrestling kind of evolved as well. But uh, okay. mm-hmm. but my job now, I'm seventy going seventy three in March. Oh, uh, happy birthday! Thank you. Um, my job now, going out, is to leave a legacy of the old school. Mm-hmm. Now the Lord's led me back on point. Now for thirty years, I was off point. I was kind of mixed up in the junk, going through motions and didn't think things really serious enough in Japan, different places that I should have to be a little transparent. Uh, the junk kind of consumed me. I was off point. So now the Lord after the Lord never got me on point where I can go teach the point. Even when I do uh, talk to schools and churches, whatever we talk about the point, mm-hmm. out of the junk and stay on point, especially for the kids. Uh, their future starts today. They think mm-hmm. when, when I get out of high school, it starts, no, it starts today. To build that work ethic, to, to and then you they'll generally figure out what they want to do in life. And mm-hmm. if they got a work ethic, anybody will help them show them mm-hmm. how to do it. But uh, I don't know where I'm going now. But <laughs> but uh, Lord's got me back on point now, where I can go and teach and have an understanding. It took me 40 years to really get an understand basic fundamental understanding of wrestling. I think, and, but now I have a clear understanding, and I'm able to really relate that in all the dressing rooms where I go. And I wrestle every, just about every weekend somewhere in the country. And uh, be able to relate that to wrestling. Now I take a kid in the ring. I try to get the best out of him. Uh, when I got the best out of him, then we go to the house. But I try to show him what a match feels like. You know, a guy, a professional golfer, showed me what a real shot, real golf shot, perfect shot feels like. It gave me something to work for. Okay. Mm-hmm. And once I felt it, now I knew how to work to, to feel it again. So I, t- I take him in the ring. I'll, 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 I'll wrestle him. And uh, sometimes they don't like what we're doing. But I'm sorry. I'm just teaching them a lesson. And uh, once they learn that lesson, if they if they're smart enough, they'll take what I just taught them and 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 and, and think about it and evaluate it and say, oh yeah, now I know I know a little bit more now I knew than than I did before we had that match. And that's my whole purpose in wrestling, is to leave that legacy. And uh, I take the kids around the ring with me with the belt and 
and make a special night for the kids, uh, three, four, two year old, whatever year old may be, uh, four, five, six, but that's, mm -hmm. the, that's the fans 20 years from now, mm -hmm. for the guys coming behind me. So I try to make a special night for those kids that, that they'll, they'll never forget. That's really cool. And, and uh, so everything, I, when I go there in, in that arena now, I go with a purpose. Mm -hmm. It's to make the kids in the dressing room better, that made the kids in the ring a better wrestler to, uh, after we have a sh after we have the match than they were before the match, and and, um, and, uh, and make a special night for those kids around there. and and the and the fans as well because I don't leave any any stone unturned when I go out there. I put it all out because they deserve everything I got in me. Okay. I don't hold nothing back. You know, if it ain't over, sometimes I go throw some back in somebody in the ring out of the dressing room until it's over, and I go until it's over. And uh, that's one thing the kids don't know now. They don't know when it's over. They don't know when it's time to go home. They don't know when it's what time is. They miss a lot of spots, and a lot of a lot of spots they should be moving. It's like in life. Sometimes we miss spots. We miss our opportunities, and uh, uh, we could have been in a better place than we were if we just took that opportunity. If we recognized it when it came along. But in uh, in the ring, though, I give the kid the, the, op the, the opportunity to recognize two or three opportunities, and if he misses them, it's time to go home. Because now my life's in his hands. If he can, if he did not, if he didn't recognize that, he he knows nothing else. So, like I said, my life's in his hands at that point. So we go to the house. Mm -hmm. But you got to know when the match is over. You know, you got to know when, when you're wrestling. Boom, boom, boom. You got to know when it's time to go. You know, if you wait too long, then it's all dead. Mm -hmm. You got to know at the right time. If the life's on timing. At the right time, you got to move it. If you wait too long, then it, then it's all null and void. Got it. So they have to now try to teach them how how to recognize. How to, how to recognize all those things and uh, just be a better athlete tomorrow than they were today. That's mm -hmm. my whole goal in, in, in wrestling career now and it's been real successful so far. i um, and getting a lot of uh, a lot of reward watching the kids grow and get better and and, uh, and now I have kids come to me. Uh, 20 years ago you told me this, that and the other and it's, I've been doing it ever since. And so that's, that's really, it's really good to, to know that your, your hard work and, and, and your all the sacrifice you made with all the getting my knee aspirated every night, uh, getting all that blood full five, six, seven, six hundred cc's of blood ripped out of it with a big needle every night after a match. I would take having to get a shot of cortisone just to walk to the ring. I had to be carried around and, and I couldn't carry my side. It was so bad. I had to be picked up and carried. Oh, couldn't walk. But right. in those days, though, there was a pencil. One had a race and one had a point. And if, uh, if you didn't walk the aisle, that eraser just raced you off the deal. But you, uh -huh. you went no matter how you were. Uh -huh. uh, I've been just almost glued together and said, walk to the ring and get to a match. Nowadays, the kids are a bunch of wussies. They got they got the uh, injury reserve list. Times have changed. You just have to kind of go with the flow. But still, we paid the, you know, the guys before me paid the, uh, paved the road for me. And, uh, and, uh, and we were able uh, to pave the road for the guys nowadays. And, I just want to bring that same payment back to back to the back to the new guys, so they can have some of the old school, the, the real deal. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I gave up so much for, I gave up, you know, I said, a family and a home I just built and a, and a job I loved, just to walk in the ring somewhere. And uh, now it's kind of it's kind of hurtful to see how it's how it's come about, but uh, but, I can, but I can still teach the, the old school. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it, it's been good. It's been good. I've enjoyed everywhere I go, and I've go all over from. I guess from Charlotte, North Carolina to, uh, gosh, I don't know, all different places every week, just about every weekend. Mm -hmm. Do a lot of traveling. But uh, not make much, don't make much money, <laughs> but, uh, but the information I can leave behind is, is well worth it. Well worth it, brother. What do you think your unique skill, what, sure. what do you think about your unique skill? <clears throat> Something about you is unique to you and has made you successful. What is that? Hmm. I think it's a combination of those whom I was raised by, okay. my father, my mother, my grandparents. Uh, you take on those traits. Uh, my dad was a devout Christian. Uh, we had... Uh, Bible study before we ate. We had Bible script before we went to bed. We every time the church door was open, we were there. He was a he was a deacon, a, but uh, he lived he lived he lived the talk. He walked the walk, and and, uh, and he died on Christmas Day. Now, it was 
sad but a glorious that was a glorious glorious day that he got the gift of eternal life on Christmas Day okay so it was a sad day but it was a glorious day at the same time now he lived it and he got the ultimate gift what what else can you get mm -hmm. nothing else the, the gift of eternal life and that's that's the ultimate gift of, of that's our goal in life anyways to get mm -hmm. to heaven I think is for trying to help our kids get there and whatever else but that but through our influences all we can do is influence you know we just have to have to just be an influence for others in that perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Ole Anderson, Ivan Koloff. Now Ivan Koloff spent a lot of time with me, even in the ring. Okay. Uh, he could. Now I had a couple, couple of the old boys. They just beat me up, and that was a lesson I learned. So it took me three years to, to figure it out. But you know, why did he beat me up like that? Mm -hmm. And I figured, wow, I did something stupid. You know, I was just dumb. Uh, but Ivan took time with me in the ring. Uh, but Ole and all that crew back in those days, the Red uh, Stevens, Ray Stevens, this, they sit down and talk like I do with the kids now, and they they tell me the basic fundamentals of what the real wrestling is all about, and I was able to learn that. And then uh, just all the moves are just something you do over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. uh, now some moves, I, now that what I watch TV for is to see what not to do anymore. Mm -hmm. I've got about. <laughs> I got about 15 different certifications and a lot of stuff from teaching school to diamondology. So I can tell you what to not to do about a lot of different things. Okay. I just never had, never had a finish. I had all these different things, but never had a finish. So I try to teach the kids, stay on point and get a finish. Then you, you can retire at 65 or whatever year you want to retire. But uh, 